Okay, this is section 7.3, page 191. Wait. That's why. Oh, okay, never mind. Sorry. Okay, this is section 7.3, page 191. All right, let's kind of uh, review a little bit what we did last time. <laughs> Can we open the blinds? It's a little dark. Shut up again. Alright. I lost my remote control mouse. Oh. 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 Found it. It's a little dark. It's too dark? Oh, it's good. I didn't know, but I'm the. Oh, there we go. Does that help? talking about the plasma membrane. You should be able to talk about that. The plasma membrane is made up of little molecules. Do you remember what the name of them is? Molecules that have phospholipids. Phospholipids. Very good. Damn. And uh, they have a certain look to them. Whoops. Well, you can You could see they have the polar head and uh, not polar tails, the hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tails, and you would how you would talk about all that in your essay. Whoops. And uh, the cholesterol molecules and the proteins and the carbohydrate chains. That's a good amount right there you can talk about. Remember that? And then the cytoplasm, what's the cytoplasm? The jello substance. So it looks like jello, yeah, it's kind of like jello. It's in the, it just kind of fills the cell. It contains a lot of water and other dissolved it's substances. It's like clear jello, it's not quite clear. Kind of like that, yeah, yeah. What's the nucleus? It's ribosomes. It de well, there's, there's actually several parts of the nucleus. This middle part, which is called the nucleolus, that creates ribosomes. And then what's in the rest of the nucleus? It's like stored genetic information. Genetic information, which is what? What DNA. molecule? DNA. Nucleic acid. That's where the DNA is. Remember the DNA you wrote about in the essay last time? That's all right here in the nucleus. And there's a nuclear membrane around it. And that information can be copied and sent out these little holes. And... The information makes its way to the ribosomes. See the ribosomes? All, the ribosomes are all over this area. What's this area called? The, uh, hey, bro, what is the DNA for again? Deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay. Whoa, that's one word, deoxyribo. Mm -hmm. Sick word. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. Um, okay, so what are the, all these little dots? Ribosomes, and they're on the structure called the endoplasmic reticulum. And that's the endoplasmic reticulum, if you remember, it's like a storage structure. It stores uh, the products 
that are made by the ribosomes and then ships them off in these little vesicles or vacuoles and they float through the cell to the Golgi apparatus and the Golgi apparatus kind of modifies them further and then sends them out. What about the lysosome? Do you remember what that was? It'll the digestive acids. Digestive enzymes, that's the floating ball of death that I discussed. Remember that? It floats around and breaks things down, yeah, it breaks things apart for the cell. It's kind of like the cell's stomach, I guess you could say. It digests things for the cell. How long does like a cell live for? It depends on the cell. Uh, your, your skin cells only live a few weeks. Your brain cells live your whole life. I thought you, like, I thought you were constantly alcohol. losing brain cells when you smell them starting. Well, you do lose some, but some last your whole life without dying. Um, okay, so that's all the parts we've talked about. So, oh wait, microtubules, what are those? They're the cystoskeleton. Cytoskeleton. And what does a cytoskeleton do? Just a little, a little protection. Holds the shape of the cell. It, uh, it has another function, if you remember. The vesicles move on the cytoskeleton. It's the monorail system, right? That's right, the monorail system of the cell. Now, if you look at a plant cell, here's some other things we haven't discussed yet. This is a plant cell. And a plant cell always has a big vacuole right in the middle, a vacuole. A vacuole is a big water-holding organelle. Holds it. That's full of water. And the water is used by the plant cell to help make energy. And we call it a vacuole. And here you see it looks real big right here. Bro. Yes? What measurement is in him? Nanometer. Nano means one one billion. So it's a hundred nanometers. It's a hundred billionths of a meter. Yes? This is in the vacuole and the other one like helps store the waste and stuff? It could. It could store waste, uh, food, that kind of thing. But in the plant cell it's always really big. Let's go back and look at there's the plant cell. See it's always really big and it, and it holds water. Water is needed for photosynthesis. Now, sometimes there are cells that have special vacuoles, um, which I'll show you right here. They're called contractile vacuoles. This is a cell called a paramecium, and we're going to look at these under the microscope when we study these later. Many protist cells possess contractile vacuoles. Canals extending from the contractile vacuole take up water that floods into the cell by osmosis. The water is transferred to the contractile vacuole, causing it to expand greatly. Contraction of the contractile vacuole expels the water through a pore that opens in the plasma membrane. So the contractile vacuole, what it does is it sucks up water and gets bigger and then spits the water out. And what it does is it keeps the paramecium from filling up with too much water. See, the paramecium lives underwater in fresh water. And water will rush in by osmosis and, and start swelling up the cell, but these contractile vacuoles collect it and push it out. That's sweet. I have actual video footage of these things too. Let's see it. This is as seen with a really good microscope. Paramecia have contractile vacuoles. Canals of the contractile vacuole take up water from the cytoplasm. The water is transferred to the contractile vacuole, making it expand. Contraction of the contractile vacuole expels the water through a pore that opens in the plasma membrane. See how it gets bigger and then smaller? Pro, how much foam did you have on those microscopes? Light this, is, this is just a regular light microscope. You can see this with ours. Really? Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. We should do that. We will do, do right now. We will do that. I don't have any pair of meats here. Dang. I'm, I'm going to order them though. We're going to look at it. Here's another one. 
The contractile vacuoles of ciliates are permanent structures that periodically squeeze excess water out through a tiny pore. In some paramecium species, the contractile vacuoles have conspicuous feeder arms, but in most ciliates, the canal system is less apparent, and the contractile vacuole appears as a simple sphere. This is showing vesicles moving on microtubules. And I don't remember, did we watch this last time? Yes. No, it's like a train ride kind of thing to so somewhere else. We watched this? No, we watched this online. Here's a vesicle, and here's a microtubule. The microtubule is part of the cytoskeleton. And this is called a motor molecule. Now, the way motor molecules work is they're formed in such a way that when the energy molecule, ATP, attaches to one of the arms, it moves. And then another energy molecule attached to another arm, and it'll move. And if this happens real fast, it kind of goes like this and runs along the microtubule. Watch it. That looks like a Chinese finger trap. Motor proteins cause movements of vesicles, organelles, and the cytoskeleton. Kinesin is a motor protein that moves vesicles and organelles where the plus ends of microtubules. See that? See how it moves? And so that, that's how these vesicles move along in cells. They're carried along by these motor proteins. So the vesicles just aren't floating around by themselves. They're carried along the microtubules. What are the motor proteins called? There's a bunch of different names for them. We'll just call them motor proteins. They have numbers and letters. <laughs> AL14, you know, something like that. You don't, you don't Did y'all see this one? Same thing. No. no. This, is a, this is using a special microscope. <coughs> it's called a phase contrast microscope. And you can actually see each of those are, this is inside a cell. Each, each circle there is a vesicle. And do you see those lines there? The faint lines, those are the microtubules that they're running on. Motor proteins too tiny to see are carrying vesicles, the small spheres, along microtubules, the tracks. Cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. See how, look at all the, all this activity is going on inside the cells. You don't really even think about it. Look at this one. Follow that one. See that vesicle? Yep. Follow that one. It kind of gets lost. Watch it. Teens too tiny to see are carrying vesicles, the small spheres, along the microtubules, moving, it just the tracks. It doesn't know where to go. It's, maybe it's now it's stopped. I know how to mine. It's a marriage molecule. <laughs> how about this one? Yes. <laughs> Do we see this one? The outer wall cells allows it to take in the raw materials it needs to stay alive. Cells trap these materials from the outside and package them into tiny cargo bubbles called vesicles. The bubble hitches a ride on a motor no bigger than a molecule, which latches on to one of the miniature monorail tracks. See, it shows that sliding, but it actually it doesn't slide. It, it moves. Usually, the bubbles reach their destinations within seconds. But in the biggest cells, which stretch from the spine to the toe, the journey can take four days. Four days? Each bubble carries a code, a chemical address label that guides it to a particular location. When it reaches its target, perhaps a lysosome, one of the cell's many recycling plants, it hops off the track and empties its cargo. The job of the recycling plant is to break down the delivered raw materials into smaller building blocks, which the cell uses to grow. That's a big lysosome, breaking the thing down. Watchmen. That's a sick movie. Okay, another thing that you see inside cells are the microtubules. What they look like is, uh, I'm sorry, I said microtubules, uh, this is the, these are the centrioles. What they look like are many microtubules 
connected in an arrangement that looks like this. There's, uh, there's nine sets of three microtubules arranged kind of in a, in a cylinder. 27 microtubules, yeah. With one microtubule in the very center that connects to all those sets. It's called a 9 plus 1 arrangement. And if we go back and we look at the cell, there they are right there. You see centrioles? Now the centrioles are very active during cell division. When cells are multiplying, um, they, uh, these centrioles will move to opposite sides of the cell and a whole bunch of uh, microtubules will become shooting out of them and it will help cause the cell to divide in two. We're going to learn about this whole process in a later chapter. It's called cell division. And that's how growth occurs. When yeah. you say all oh, the microtubules are like shooting out of the centrioles, do they start breaking apart? Do they produce new ones? The centrioles themselves? Yeah. Um, they, uh, no, they don't start breaking apart. They, we think they produce new ones. But we don't know for We don't know for sure. It's kind of a mystery how the centrioles work. Because plant cells don't have centrioles, but they can divide also. And, and microtubules come shooting out of an area in plant cells, but there are no centrioles there. So they don't really know what, uh, how that works. Are the centrioles just there for decoration? That could be. So if you're writing about this in your essay, just say centrioles are important in cell division. What is that? I'm not sure when it's up. Oh, I thought it was Friday. I think it's a 20 verse. I think you should just get 100 for now. I thought it was Friday. I think I should get 100 for half. Well, I used to get 100 for half. Okay. This organelle. And by the way, this is in your book on page 197. This is the energy organelle for the cell. It's called the mitochondrion. The mitochondrion, its job is to put together ATP. Did we study the ATP molecule yet in here? No. There's a molecule called ATP. It's an energy molecule for the cell. Drew, up here. There's a molecule called ATP. It's the energy molecule of the cell. And this thing right here makes it often called the powerhouse of the cell. And they look like little beans, and there's a whole bunch of them located in the cell. But their job is to take molecules and put them together to make ATP. ATP is like a little battery. And the little battery can float around inside the cell and provide energy for various processes. Like when the little arms of the motor molecules move, every time they move their arm, they use an ATP. Where do those ATPs come from? They come from this thing. This thing. Producing. So we call it a mitochondrion. And it's often called the powerhouse of the cell. Here's some pictures. They don't all look exactly like that. From far away, these long structures, those are mitochondrions. The long rods are mitochondrion and the small spheres are vesicles. Their movement shows that the cytoplasm in this cell is streaming actively. Fluorescence microscopy shows this even more clearly. Oh, this is cool. That's seen with the fluorescence microscope. That means you turn the lights out and give substances to the cell that makes the organelles glow. And those are inside the organelles there, you see them glowing. So there's a lot of movement inside these cells. Another video. Hello. What happened, bro? Peter's stuck. Oh, man. Oh. Yep. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. Mitochondria are another kind of cell in the cytoplasm. Inside of mitochondria, there are highly folded membranes. Here, chemical reactions take place that use oxygen to burn particles of food for energy. Mitochondria are often called the powerhouses of the cell because they are responsible for providing for the cell's energy needs. The number of mitochondria varies in different kinds of cells. Very active cells, like muscle cells, contain thousands of mitochondria. To read the difference between white meat and dark meat is the mitochondria. You eat white meat or dark meat like chicken. White meat has more mitochondria. Mitochondria are white. And that's why it's white meat, because it's full of mitochondria in the muscle. Does it taste different? It doesn't really taste different. I, maybe a little bit. You know, if you like white meat, you can probably tell a little bit of difference in the taste. This is a chloroplast. And chloroplasts are only pl present in plant cells. Chloroplasts are organelles that make glucose. Remember glucose, that hexagon molecule? Which type of organic molecule is glucose? It's a monosaccharide. Which type of organic molecule is that? That's a carbohydrate. It's used for quick sugar, quick energy. Here's where it's made. This is where sugars are originally made. All the sugars in the world get made in the chloroplasts of plant cells. And how do we get sugar? We kill the plants and steal it from them. That's how we get sugar. If you want, if you're eating a potato, that's what you've done. A farmer somewhere killed a plant Stole the potato, cut it up. How do you know it wasn't You his eat plant? it. What's that? How do you know it wasn't his plant? Okay. You don't know that. Stealing the potato. You don't know that. And uh, and when you eat it, you get those sugars inside you. You see? We well, get the sugars also though from like eating like the cow. And the cow ate yeah. plants. We can get them from that, right? Yeah, but the cow originally yeah. ate plants, so the sugar got in the cow from the cow eating the plant. So you're really getting it. From plants. Wait, go ahead. Quiet, please. What if you're eating fish? Wait, no, we had, go ahead. You had a question. Oh, how did it capture light? The how did they capture light? Yeah. Um, thought... they capture light? yeah thought... um, there's a pigment called chlorophyll that sits on these on these little thylakoid membranes. Oh, I'm, I'm talking here. Okay. I'll answer Drew's question. There's a, a pigment in these little membranes here that captures sunlight and turns it into sugars, helps turn it into sugars. It's a very complicated process called photosynthesis. Your, your book spends a whole chapter discussing it later. So we'll talk about how it works, but uh, it's, it's, it's on these little membranes. They're called thylakoid membranes. Yeah, Drew, what was your question? How do fish, how do, fish, well, how do you get sugar from fish? Well, they get sugars in their body from what they eat. They often eat algae or plants, or they eat animals, or they eat animals that ate algae or plants. What? I just like eating candy. If you had like a strictly meat eating cow. Well, the, if the cow eats meat, like, okay, so which cows okay. don't don't do, cows but if they did, <laughs> but let's, let's pretend that the cow did eat meat. It's, if it's eating meat, listen, quietly, if it's eating meat, what it's eating, eight plants. See, okay. plants are the original source. The Even if there's no that's way meaty. you can eat something okay, so that has you had plants. a little baby cow okay. that had just been born. Oh yes. And you won't let it eat, you won't let it eat any plants. Okay. And then it starves, and then it dies. So if you eat the cow, will you get any energy? Yes, because because, wait, because the mother put in the mother's body when she was pregnant. Don't let me explain this. It takes a long time. I was going to let you all in the lab here if we could get through. Oh, my bad. I wasn't that No, 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 no. If the mother put energy molecules into its baby's body before it was born, 
And those energy molecules came from food that the mother ate. Tribulation. I'm going to figure out a way to make it work. There's no way. The, the original source of all the sugars is always one. Go to your biologist and do this. Go to Bing.com. Bing. Bing. It's got a bunch of vitamins and minerals and proteins and stuff in it that are, that are good. Bro. Yes. It's kind of like a new iPod. <laughs> Get the new iPod, you haven't charged it yet, but it turns on and it has half a charge and you haven't let it charge yet. Did you get it? No. No. Look at the floor plan. No. That looks like a skin bag. Move along by the cytoplasm. Oh, that, those look like the cheek cells. The, the shape of them. Yeah, but these are plant cells. And that's why they're rectangle. Kind of like pork. You can always tell like the, cell, the, the shape of them. You can always tell a plant cell because it's got these chloroplasts in it, Ooh. and you can see here the chloroplasts are moving. Are all those just like the uh, onion cell look like that. Yep. Onion cells look like that. Yeah. You couldn't ones? see the chloroplasts in the onion cells because those onion cells aren't doing photosynthesis. Mr. Willis, how many uh, chloroplasts do you cell have? It depends on the cell, but they can. Some can have hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> More video. Chloroplast. This real-time movie shows that the cytoplasm in these LOD cells is streaming vigorously. Watch the chloroplasts as a guide to what the cytoplasm is up to. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis requires energy from sunlight. It also requires carbon dioxide gas from the atmosphere. And water that for most plants comes from the soil. Inside chloroplasts, the energy of sunlight is used to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose, a kind of sugar that is the plant's main food. In the process, Oxygen gas also is produced. The oxygen that we breathe comes from photosynthesis. That's what we're doing in AP right now. We're learning about photosynthesis. These videos are creepy. I'm sorry. Okay, finally, page 198. We're talking about cilia and flagella. That's smaller flagella. Cilia are little hairs that are on the outside of a cell. Lots of cells have these to move. And um, most cells that have these have thousands of them. And they're little hairs that kind of go like this. And it, it moves the cell along. Or you have some that are lining your, for instance, your trachea, your airway. And then they beat like this and they move mucus up from your lungs and out into your mouth so um, if you yeah if you're ever breathing in a lot of dust and that kind of thing it pushes it up this is why people who smoke a lot are always coughing because all that dust gets trapped in their trachea and the little cilia on the cells moves it back up into their throat is that what like like it's like put down by like the tar and stuff the tar yeah, there's a bunch of tar and stuff in cigarettes. Watch the little cilias. Locomotion, that is the ability to move about, is very highly developed in protists. Protists basically use any one of three different cell structures for locomotion. Perhaps the most common of these are the wiggling hair-like structures called cilia, seen here. Organisms possessing cilia are classified into the protist phylum known as the ciliates. 
Besides being used for locomotion, many ciliates also use cilia to sweep food into mouth-like openings in their cells. And then there's the flagellates, those are cells that have flagella. A flagella is a single long whip-like structure. Sperm cells have this. And they whip back and forth and either push the thing along, or some of them the flagella spins like, like a uh, propeller of a plane and it pulls it along. Flagella video. Look at the magnification, it's like 26,000 Yeah, that's a small cell. A third phylum of protists are the flagellates. These organisms move by wiggling long, whip-like threads called flagella. The flagellate seen here, called a euglena, is an interesting organism because it possesses both animal and plant-like characteristics. Like a plant, the euglena has green-colored chloroplasts that are used to make food by photosynthesis. However, under conditions of darkness, a euglena behaves more like an animal by hunting for and ingesting food. Other features of the euglena that are more animal than plant-like are its ability to move freely about and to sense light with its large red eye spot. So all these single-celled creatures are kind of cool. We're going to look at them when we get to that chapter. There's a whole chapter where we just study those. So, those are all the parts. Now, part of the essay, you have to tell the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell. And I'll go ahead and tell you there's, whoops, there's basically four main differences. Okay? The first difference, and we've already discussed these, so this is kind of review. The vacuole. Plant cells have a real big one with water, animal cells don't. Second difference, chloroplasts. Plant cells have them, animal cells don't. They're for making food. Animals can't make their own food. Plants can. Third difference, cell wall. The cell wall is a real hard outer layer in plant cells. It's real thick and it's tough, and it's actually not part of the cell, it's outside the cell. The plant cell secretes the cell wall and makes it outside of itself. And that cell wall is tough. It's kind of like a chain link fence. Stuff can get through it, but stuff can't break it. Just like water, if water goes right through it, just like if you threw water through a chain link fence, it would go right through it. But the chain link fence is hard to break if you wanted to, to get inside the cell as, a, as an invader, like an invading organism. You couldn't get through it. And the plant, the animal so animal cells don't have a cell wall and plant, plant cells do. And then there's two things animal cells have that plant cells don't. Animal cells have centrioles, plant cells don't. Animal cells have lysosomes. Plant cells don't. Remember, lysosomes are kind of like digestive organs, and plants don't absorb food and break it down, so they don't need the lysosomes. Plants make their own food from scratch. So there's that five, it's really five differences, isn't it? Animal cells have centrioles and lysosomes, plant cells don't. Plant cells have chloroplasts, vacuoles, and cell walls, and animal cells don't. Okay? I have a question. Yes. How on the test are we going to label flag just the flagella and the cilia? Um, if you drew an animal cell, you could maybe draw a flagella on the outside if you wanted, or some cilia, but you don't have to label those. You could just leave those out. Yeah, yeah. Remember, it's got to be 250 words. Okay? We've, I've, the la it's taken me two days to talk about all these. Surely you can get 250 words out of that. Tucker? Never mind. Nothing? Yeah. Yes. You can't just draw them in the definitions. 
like yes, words. you could you could draw this and write the definitions, but it's got to be long enough enough words. That's gonna be so hard to draw. Are we gonna be drawing the uh, practice cells? it? What's that? Do we draw like the cells or are you drawing? Them? No, you draw. Can we draw on a different sheet? Yeah. Yeah, you can draw on a different sheet. Can I bring in a sheet with them and then trace them? On no. Does it have to be like in a paragraph or two to make like label them? For like, for this one, you can just write like the word or... and do definitions. Doesn't have to be in paragraph form. Look at there. Jeez, look at Double this B, thing. untucked, late, unbelievable. Forty-one thirty-seven. Half popped. Pollock. Other questions? Do you understand what you have to do? Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I All right. This off. That's it. Will us out. <laughs>